my name is Dr. Beniza Vincent Beidou and I work in the Department of Child Health. We are going to talk about the neurological examination in children. Now, when we talk about the neurological examination in children, most medical students feel that's a very daunting task. But today we want to make it as easy as possible for any medical student to enjoy and understand the neurological examination of children. The neurological examination of children actually begins with a clinic visit. In the clinic visit, as you see here, we prefer a very, very relaxed atmosphere for a child. Um, what most people don't realize is that um, a lot more information can be gathered from children just by observation. Children at play, there are patterns of movement, uh, movement, behavior in a clinic setting. And more can be gathered from, um, from such observations than even a formal neurological examination. So we like children to be welcomed first in a very relaxed atmosphere. You can have toys or a play area between the doctor and the patient and of course the parents. And whilst um, the doctor engages the parents, the child is made to play and as that goes on, observations are made. Now, the second point is there is a difference between the developmental examination of a child and the neurological examination of a child. The developmental examination of a child actually assesses um, acquired learned skills. So for instance, when a child acquires a motor milestone or a certain fine motor skill milestone or speech and language, these are, are, are skills that are coming on and that's basically the assessment going on. A neurological examination attempts to make a, 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 a really, in reality a neuroanatomical diagnosis that where is the focal point, that is the underlying integrity of the nervous system. That is what we are assessing and that is really the beginning of our uh, formal neurological examination. So I hope I'm quite clear that there is a difference between the neurological examination and the developmental examination of a child. The neurological examination is probably the most difficult of the systems because there are so many parts to the examination. It's much, much easier to examine a child and the way we teach it to medical students, probably a cooperative child where we say do this and do that and then the ch child gives you responses. Naturally, far more difficult is the child who uh, is an infant, for instance, or a child who has developmental delay and will not really obey your instructions. Like I said earlier on, it may be more useful to um, uh, you may benefit more from accurate observations of such a child than actually going through the formal neurological examination. We are going to tackle the cranial nerves system examination under neurology. As we all know, there are 12 cranial nerves and each nerve needs to be examined. We do not attempt to make um, an, a very accurate neuroanatomical diagnosis at, at even the postgraduate level, but it does help to remember that there are certain nerves that come from certain areas and that makes it much easier to make a, a general neuroanatomical diagnosis. So I shall begin by saying that um, when we look at say the midbrain, what nerves do we find there? We have the third nerve coming from the midbrain and the fourth nerve. When we look at the pons in the brain, then we have also the other cranial nerves coming from it, the fifth, sixth, seventh nerve, and the eighth nerve. The next part of the brain is the medulla, and there the ninth nerve, the tenth cranial nerve, the eleventh cranial nerve, and the twelfth nerve emanate from the medulla. So nobody needs a detailed neuroanatomical knowledge. But with these three broad areas, we can now tell where these nerves are coming from. And by examination of the cranial nerves, we now can make a general neuroanatomical diagnosis. 